sustainability currently in aviation is a, a target. Um, it's been there for many years, but it's always been a challenge. I think people in the industry have always challenged with the the commercial need to make profits and the kind of societal obligation to be sustainable. The industry is always concentrated on aircraft design and lately sustainable aviation fuels. I don't think the industry has ever really targeted sustainability as a key objective. It's always been a bit of a byproduct. Um, uh, one indication of that is we've recently moved away from manufacturing aircraft from aluminium and the latest types are manufactured from composite materials. The ability to recycle these composites is really still very much in its infancy, whereas the ability to recycle aluminium structures is very well advanced and it's very efficient. I think that's a normal cycle of innovation and sustainability and recycling. We're seeing it in the, the, the lithium-ion battery field in electric cars, electric vehicles. So the industry is trying. It's on the journey. I don't think it's as far down the journey as it should be, but we're starting to see glimmers of efforts to be sustainable across more fields now than just pure aircraft design, as in fuel savings or the use of sustainable aviation fuels. Absolutely. The, <clears throat> the, the interiors of aircraft are very much still based around petrochemicals. And our ability to recycle them, I think, is in its infancy. So whilst we can all concentrate on the new toy, the new aircraft, the new materials, that probably equates for a very small percentage of the aircraft currently flying in the industry. So our efforts in recycling or reusing what's currently out there will very much you know, benefit. And again, we're only mirroring what we see in society. You know, people are asking you, don't, don't design a new plastic bag, reuse the one that we already have. Aircraft interiors and aircraft as a whole have to be viewed in the same fashion. We'll see the legacy you know, in 20, 30 years time of our efforts now with the new airframes. But definitely in the existing fleets, a lot of effort has got to go into how we dispose of those aircraft. I read a, a research paper recently about you know, carbon composites. By 2050, they, est they estimate there'll be 500,000 tonnes of composite waste to be recycled. Yet, with you know, no real industry out there to do it. So that's kind of one of the key challenges, is that innovation's great, but as we've seen with innovation, you've got to have all these other industries that pop up to support it. Innovation is based on volume. Uh, from what I can see, the current real innovation is still based around fuel reduction. Um, modern engine innovation, you know, modern aircraft use a percentage of the fuel that legacy aircraft, and what I mean by legacy aircraft is aircraft still being made in the 90s. When I say a percentage reduction, it might be 50 to 60 percent of a reduction on certain legs. You know, the rest of it is, is still still very much in its infancy, so it's really still fuel-based. And as we know, that's a commercial driver, not a green or sustainable, sustain, a sustainability driver. It's, the industry maturity still has to get there to really be innovative from a materials point of view. I think the industry needs to do more to really encourage manufacturers to come up with new solutions when it comes to materials. There's also an education piece to really educate the users and the clients. In the business aviation space, really, the client is the one that dictates the look and the feel of the interior. Obviously, in the commercial aviation field, it's really the airlines. So it's, it's almost, I don't want to say it's a chicken and egg scenario, but which comes first? Is it the need to innovate or does innovation drive use? Um, Still today, a lot of commercial aviation interiors are plastics, petrochemical based. So really it's use of cellulose, plastic alternatives that really needs to drive that. In the business jet interiors, we're still using materials that we were using 20 years ago, 
to basically put together the main monuments in the interiors. Just the simple fact that we're using the same materials that we were 20 years ago kind of paints a picture about the lack of movement and speed in that space. I think it's the concentration and the use of plastic-based or lacquer-based finishes only really applies to business jets and things like that, but it's still a legacy use of materials where we, I'm sure there are current materials out there that could replace that. And of course, these materials are used on every aircraft. Most business jets will go through a renovation cycle every five years. So it's not just at manufacture, it's throughout the whole life cycle of every aircraft flying, we're reusing these same materials. We've seen enough examples in other industries where plastic now is becoming a material of last resort as opposed to the go-to material. And I think that's, that will be the real indicator of where we've matured in aircraft interiors. When the only time we use a plastic is because there genuinely is just no other alternative. I don't think, I think anybody that's in, has been in aviation long enough would be very honest and say, we're, <clears throat> we're nowhere near market leader, we're not even market average when it comes to the use of sustainable materials or even an, the effort. Aviation is still such a low margin industry, it really is all about the commercial outcome. So while sustainability might be nice and might be cool, it's also very expensive. So you might be the most sustainable airline gone bust. The reality is <clears throat> new modern um, kind of manufacturing techniques and costs have to come down for it to be sustainable from a cost point of view as well as from a green sustainability point of view. So I certainly don't believe anybody in, this, in the industry would be happy with where we are currently. During my career, one of the, one of the major advances that have, has made me proud from a sustainability point of view, you just need to look at engine technology. I remember hearing somebody discuss an aircraft going to the Caribbean from a London airport, and they used to put 130 tonnes of fuel on. Not too many years after that, another wide-body aircraft, somebody was saying they were putting 55 tonnes of fuel on. So that's kind of a, a great example of, in aviation, when the industry sets a target, I think we've got the finest, you know, we've got the finest engineers, we've got the finest minds within the industry to make it happen. Um, but that's been a topic of conversation for many years. I think from an interiors perspective, one of the things that really made me kind of smile was when one of our clients actually asked, how can you make my cabin more sustainable? We didn't have too many answers at the time, but just the simple fact that somebody in aviation was starting to ask those questions, it's a client-based industry. Once the clients are asking for it, the industry will respond. And the one thing that aviation's proved is once it decides to respond, it'll respond very well and very quickly. We're starting to see alternatives nowadays to the types of plastics and you know, those types of materials. It's just currently, I would say, for our offering, things like the carpet material, the curtain material, things like that, are now fully sustainable, fully green accredited. And I know there are steps in place to replace some of the, the more legacy materials. So really, from a pride point of view, the technical engine and aircraft design bit will always lead that. Sustainability is very important to JetMS on, on a number of factors because one, I think from a client perspective, we can offer much better value to the client. Just from a very simple kind of philosophy of repair it, don't replace it, which is a very old fashioned kind of recycling mantra, but it's certainly in air aircraft interiors. Technology's moved on now, so our ability to repair and keep the, the aesthetics of an aircraft cabin good for longer is there. We've introduced a number of programs that we can offer that actually prevent the need to completely refurbish the cabin in its normal cycle and try and elongate that out. 
you know, it brings a it brings a value to the customer. It reduces the amount of new materials introduced. So is that. From the other point of view is, I think in the aircraft industry, from an interiors completion center, it's important to us because if we make it important, it will pass on to the manufacturers. The manufacturers are commercial businesses, so they need to know they have a market. So we really should be the ones creating the market for the new cycle of materials to come online. If not, it just becomes theory and theory doesn't, you know, doesn't prevent any waste. Sustainability is important to our clients um, because I think, again, private aviation, certainly over you know, the period we've just gone through, achieved both a positive press and a negative press. The positive press was you know, pretty much self-evident. The negative press is people are flying one individual on an aircraft, you know, um, which has its challenges in the press. But the clients that operate these aircraft actually have an ability to be, to be leaders, to demand action. They, they are very self-aware of the lives that they live and, and how they operate. So they want to try and do better, offset. You see carbon offsetting is a very, a very kind of talked about piece at the moment. Most people are, are doing it through the, the carbon offsetting schemes, you know, planting trees. The clients we deal with actually want to be more personally involved. They want to know that the money they're spending is directly going onto their aircraft. It's, it's making use of modern technology, being greener. Instead of using you know, plastics, use leather. Instead of using carbon, you know, in some respects we're being asked to go back to some of the more traditional wood-based appearance. Not because that's the modern look, because it is actually a more sustainable interior. We'll probably badge it as retro and we'll make it look very good. But until we have the full suite of materials available, you know, clients are having to take some tough choices and, and really try and reintroduce. But a, a lot of our demands now from the client, sustainability is a common conversation. And a lot of contracts we sign, we have to prove that we have sustainability at our core. So it's, but I think the next five or 10 years, that demand will raise even further. So we'll see. I think partnering with JetMS to, to raise the whole sustainability conversation will be important for clients, for manufacturers, the whole ecosystem of what we're trying to build. And it is an ecosystem. I think resale values going forward of aircraft, there will be a premium if you have more of a sustainable interior. I believe that manufacturers being part of that sustainable ecosystem at some point in the industry, there will, be, there will come a separation of manufacturers who have been early adopters and those who stayed in the old-fashioned manufacturing piece. The value, like JetMS, we are part of a very large group. So there's a large opportunity for us to, to move our sustainable message across multiple platforms. JetMS themselves, you know, we operate everything from cabin work, but we're also involved in maintenance. Um, we're involved in aircraft design, parts design. So the sustainability piece, we believe we can affect it across the whole platform of aircraft maintenance, aircraft overhaul. And I think having our clients and our, our vendors as part of that journey, hopefully, I'd like to think we'll, we'll almost drive the journey. And that's the most important thing any of us can do, is actually be the ones that put the energy in, because that's what the industry has lacked or directed towards fuel use and engine aircraft design. We need to spend the next 10 years putting that impetus into the materials that we use in the interiors. Um, and I believe if we do that, clients will benefit, manufacturers will benefit, will benefit, but more importantly, the whole sustainability argument, and we do call it an argument. It's, we use that word for a reason, 
because we need to convince people that it's important. And the industry has got to take responsibility and we're, you know, we are a major player in the industry. So it's almost an obligation to take it up and be part of the journey. I think my simple message to the industry about sustainability is take ownership. Running independent businesses is, is very important. And as, as a CEO, you know, all CEOs want to grow the best business, the most successful business, the most profitable business. But at some point, all of the other responsibilities of running a business should come into play. Sustainability nowadays being a key one. So actually working together and forming partnerships, alliances, allegiances is probably one of the biggest things that we've got to do and be mature about. Because I do believe passionately that we can still have very successful, very independently successful businesses, but still work together to achieve sustainability. And in that way, maybe in 10 or 15 years as a collection of CEOs, we can all look at each other, or more importantly, look at yourself in the mirror and say, do you know what? I did make a difference. And that's where it becomes personal, is that at the end of all of our careers, we just want to look in the mirror and say, I did make a difference. If there's a hundred of us doing that, that's when the power of the collective gets together, and then we know we will make a difference. JetMS is taking responsibility by, by trying to be the one that puts its head above the parapet and say to people that we need to act by doing things like this is taking responsibility and almost bearing your soul to say, if we don't act, then we're not being responsible as businesses, as leaders, as part of an industry, which I'm passionate about. It's just owning up and acknowledging that our industry has a long way to travel to achieve what would be a fantastic outcome. You know, Clean, efficient, sustainable air travel should be a target. And then we've also, you know, when I talk about looking in the mirror, how do I look in the mirror? How do I address a classroom full of young engineering students and say, your challenge throughout your life as engineers is to design what I was, un what I was unable to design. And if we keep that progression and keep that movement, you know, talk about going to the moon, there's no, uh, there's no challenge that these, uh, these people won't, won't accomplish. The best outcome that I could hope for is that as an industry, we're as, we're as honest to ourselves as we are to our regulators. It's, it's probably one of the most highest regulated industries in the world. If we take that same sense of ownership and, and owning the problem, which is something that aviation has done throughout its whole life cycle, everybody should own this problem. And it is a problem, sustainability, because we, we, we're surrounded by and reminded by the problem of what's happening, you know, global warming, etc. So it's, it's with us. So in aviation, we've got a part to play, and our part is to take our industry and in many years to come, be proud of it and be proud of what it did and what it created and the legacy of it. And to say to, to the people in the industry, this is what we did, this is what we achieved, and isn't it a better place because of it? I think that would be a great outcome for me from aviation. Yeah, it's, you know, we're, we're, trying to, we're trying to affect change. Um, and the easiest way and the, the, the most common sense way for us to affect change is to, is to deal directly with the manufacturers and try and influence their manufacturing kind of ethos. Uh, we recently had a discussion with a, somebody that just makes items from aluminium 
And when we asked the question, you know, could you make this from recycled aluminium, their answer was, well, yes, of course we can, but most people want it from new. And it was just a really good example where it just took a simple question, is it possible? Yes, it is. But then the obligation's on us. It's an economics question, supply and demand. If we can generate the demand, the manufacturers will generate the supply. So that's what we're doing, is we're, in our everyday dealings with manufacturers, probing, trying to search out, can it be done more sustainably? And of course, if it can't, is find out why. Um, and of course, then we'll be leading our clients down the, can it be repaired instead of replaced? Because aviation is such a fast moving industry. If it can be repaired now, maybe there'll be a good alternative in a number of years at the, you know, when it needs to be replaced. So that's really what we're doing. It's across the whole spectrum. One of the good case studies that we've come across is, you know, when we're redoing aircraft interiors, seat foams is always a topic of conversation. Um, the current seat foam is just a petrochemical based um, product. What we've come across is a company that is trying to introduce biomass into the seat foams. So they're being very innovative, very you know, forward looking in what they're trying to achieve and they're trying to increase the amount of biomass that they can fit into fully certified seat foams. That for us is almost, it epitomizes the start of the journey. You may not be able to create a 100% sustainable biodegradable seat foam, but 10% is better than none. 20, 30, 40, that's the journey. That's why billing this as a journey is the truth. There is no perfection, there's no sainthood. Um, it's a long path that we've all got to embark on to achieve a goal. So it's a, for me, it's a very, very nice example of where I would like to see the same progress done within the, the plastics, the, the monuments, you know, all of that type of material. Yeah, one of our current initiatives um, was a, a company that we came across called Transparagon. In the aircraft interiors, we're always looking for new alternatives, um, and, and seat foams is, is currently only made from, bio, or from um, petrochemicals. But Transparagon have started introducing biomass into their products with the hope that they will eventually create a fully biodegradable, biomass-based seat foam. They're currently, I believe, at 20%, moving to 40 pretty soon, but it's a perfect example of that journey, that, that movement from the current material type to the future type. And I think it really epitomizes what needs to be seen across the whole material spectrum in aircraft interiors. We, we formed Transparagon just before the pandemic. Um, timing is everything, of course, um, but actually that turned out very well for us. Um, it gave us time to study the market, understand future demands, uh, position ourselves for the upturn um, post pandemic. Spent most of my career um, and my partners done the same thing within the aviation interior market. So we had a strong desire to look at aircraft interior components, um, plastic parts, foam parts uh, for more affordability, higher quality, and equally with a with a stronger green agenda. So that's really how we formed the company. We've been working hard in the last uh, year and a half now, developing bioplastics and bio foams for that sector in particular. So sustainability and aviation, I believe, manifests itself in some of the big ticket items typically propulsion systems, uh, sustainable aviation fuel, they're all getting a lot of airtime and rightly so. Huge amounts of work and effort are going into hydrogen systems, uh, electrical propul propulsion, um, but not a great deal of focus is given to, uh, dare I say, some of the smaller parts of, uh, of an aircraft. So again, we're focused on the interior market, the interior sector um, in particular, not uniquely interiors, looking at freight bays and other parts of the aircraft where we can uh, look to deploy more sustainable products. I think it has to be more sustainable um, in the future. It's a, it's a hugely important subject. Uh, massive amounts of work is currently going on, um, but more has to be done. The CO2 emission story within aviation is, is massive, so it's incumbent on aviation to continue to push the boundaries and do more. I think there's a collective responsibility across the aviation sector as a whole um, to drive a new agenda. Um, it's the logistics uh, network, uh, the desire for, for human beings to continue to seek and explore the world. That's not going to go away. In fact, the statistics are showing that passenger traffic is coming back. So we have to change the agenda. We have to look for new ways of, uh, 
of uh, finding more sustainable solutions. Again, I think airlines, who are often the, the organisations that uh, are very um, clearly in the public domain, um, behind those and beneath those are an array of different companies and organisations, all have a collective part to play. I think the airlines can put pressure, and rightly so, on those companies. Um, be that uh, an, an aircraft manufacturer or an engine manufacturer or a parts manufacturer, they all have a part to play, as I said before. So I think um, you know, the, the, you'd like to see the pressure comes from, from within each business, but sometimes due pressure has to come from, from the top, dare I say, if you think of the airline being at the top of the pyramid. JetMS completions are certainly very aggressive on this, on this subject. Uh, Transparagon were already working with JetMS um, ahead of uh, Kieran's arrival. Uh, Kieran and I go back um, some way, and it's great to see Kieran come on board. We have a similar agenda, we have a similar passion for the green agenda. So it's great to be working with the company and with Kieran and the team uh, to look where we can deploy this technology for the best effect for JetMS completions and their customers. So Transparagon Global partnered with an organisation through the pandemic uh, who had waste material, uh, bio-waste material, and we just thought there was a great opportunity to see if we could uh, thermoform that and uh, convert it into either plastic or foams. So we've been embarking on some R&D work over the last 12 months. Uh, I'm pleased to say we've now delivered a foam with 20% biomass um, within, the, uh, within the foam itself. So that's taking polyols out and putting uh, greener material back in. Really, really pleased with the outcome and we have a pathway to 40% in 2023. I think what's really important for, for people in the world to recognise is it's, it's going to take baby steps to get to the end game, um, but every, every turn of the corner we're, uh, we're going in the right direction. The significance of 20% of biomass material means there's 20% of less uh, uh, fossil fuel derived material within the product, so that's a step in the right direction. Uh, it's, it's a significant amount, it's, it's an insignificant amount, depends where you're coming from, what your starting point is, but it's a journey and we're on that journey and that's the most important thing for me and, and for Transparagon. We've started this journey, we've made good inroads, we've tested the foam. One of the things that we had to ensure, uh, certainly from a safety and regulatory point of view, is that the, uh, the product uh, past the, the regulatory tests and also the longevity tests. So we've, con we've conducted five year uh, life cycle testing in the product. So it's really performing very, very well. Uh, but we have to continue that march. There's tens, if not hundreds of millions of tons of plastic waste a year. Uh, so if we can play our small part in that um, and work together with JetMS to continue that journey, then that can only be a good thing. I'd like to think that the consumer, the customer, um, and that's a, it's a growing demand for more sustainable solutions. Um, is made aware of those carriers who are leading the charge and offering solutions um, that uh, when they buy that ticket to fly that aircraft, they are um, in part um, flying with a carrier that's, that's taken the subject seriously and have parts on their aircraft which are more sustainable. The next extension for us is really in the plastic sector, um, but that's much more challenging, thermoforming uh, a different mix of, uh, of chemistry. Um, foams wasn't without its challenges, but um, plastics is another um, another subject altogether, but it extends into resins, uh, composite materials. There is a whole pathway to explore, um, and whether it's us or anyone else for that matter, uh, willing to take the chance to do the R&D, then um, we, we've demonstrated that great things can happen. Um, we haven't bored the ocean by any, by any stretch, but um, we, are, we, are, we are making a mark. I think ultimately, um, you know, the target has to be um, as sustainable as possible, and that encompasses materials, it encompasses propulsion systems, it encompasses waste reduction, there's a whole gambit of things that need to come together. It's not just not one story that's going to fix the problem, but um, I'd like to think, certainly in my lifetime, there is a far more sustainable um, method of transport, aviation transport, than we have today. What that number is, difficult to say. All I know is that sustainable fuels are now coming, coming through en masse at a much, much lower price point now, which has been the prohibitor or inhibitor in the past. Um, we're driving a march on materials. Others are doing the same thing. Um, yeah, I'd like to see one day that um, much less CO2 emissions, um, aircraft made of parts uh, which are far more sustainable. I was, um, say, fortunate enough to deliver the 787 for Virgin, um, first composite aircraft um, uh, designed, a commercial airliner, uh, very successful, great um, uh, fuel saving um, opportunities. So I think it's just continuing that, extent, you know, continuing that model basically. In my experience, some of the inhibitors can often be with the regulators. Um, I think what I've seen and observed is that we, with new technology and new processes, it's challenging the norm, it's challenging the way things have been done in the past. So I think what we do need is to educate the regulatory community as well as the customer base and the suppliers. I think it all needs to come together. I'm not saying the regulators are wrong, I'm just saying I don't think they're as unfamiliar with the technology as, 
as we are at this moment in time. And I think we have to come together and work together to find new rules and regulations that uh, fit tomorrow's world compared with the world we are in today. So one of our other ambitions through the development and R&D of the materials was to see if we can use existing machinery that's in the industry today. Um, so not having to go and make design um, incur the costs and the uh, and the carbon footprint of new machinery. So we've used existing thermoforming machinery, um, foam producing machinery, which is fantastic. So we have, with a small adaption to existing kit, um, we're able to produce this material. So that really is a bonus and something we, we hope to achieve and we have achieved. We're all very proud of this industry. So I want us to look back in 15, 20 years time and, and be extremely proud of what we achieved. And we achieved it because we were brave enough to start on this journey that we're embarking on. Um, and, and we're asking everybody else to embark on it with us. And, um, and let's see where, where it ends up. That's the exciting bit. I would say come and join the journey. It's fun, it's exciting, it's, um, it's thrill-taking at times. Um, you don't quite know what the outcome is going to be, um, but you have to have that belief we're going to get there. Um, you know, land on the moon at the end of the century, if you remember back in the day, it was achieved. So I think setting ambitious targets, realistic targets, I think if you set targets which are you know, virtually impossible, then you switch people off. So I would like to, to think that we're demonstrating we're doing something. It brings belief that things can be done. So come and join the army of, uh, of people that want to make a difference. Thank you.